kama ima ne bal pa kama tira sa ju na mo ba na en son a bum no gantin ba na son sa ju na mo a bal ya o tin joma ka bum ne la safia i keep praying to god to make my next surgery successful what wrong have i committed to deserve this god Please help me to get money to buy my basic needs. All my clothes smell of urine. Meet Kuka from Lada Yiri, a village in the Wa West district of the Upper West region. Kuka is in her mid 40s. Her condition developed when she went into labor. The labor produced contractions that pushed the baby's head against Kuka's pelvic bone. The soft tissues between the baby's head and the pelvic bone became compressed due to inadequate blood flow. As Kuka reeled through the pain, the delicate tissue in the pelvic area died. This has created a hole between her bladder and vagina. Kuka's labor lasted for 15 hours. The baby died eventually, leaving her with no joy. She has endured four surgeries to correct her fistula condition, but that hasn't made a difference. I have undergone more than three surgeries, all to no avail. After my last surgery, I haven't been too well. I always get exhausted with any small tasks I undertake. So if the next operation will also come along with complications, then I'll prefer to live with this condition for the rest of my life. Whenever I'm in the midst of people, they always ask if any child has sold herself with urine. I pity myself because I can't own up. Today, Kuka urinates on herself, sometimes even without knowing. This is causing her a lot of shame and has left her with no friends. After a few minutes into this interview, Kuka was soaked in her urine. In this documentary, Beryl Richter tells you the chilling and painful experiences that some women have had to live with for the rest of their lives because of a very serious childbirth injury, obstetric fistula. In developing countries, over 85% of obstetric fistula cases are caused by prolonged labor. According to the World Health Organization, obstetric fistula also account for up to 6% of all maternal deaths. The prevalence alone highlights the existence of global inequality in access to health care and basic human rights. It is also estimated by the World Health Organization that 2 million young women live with obstetric fistula in Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Medical Director of the Upper West Regional Hospital and fistula surgeon Dr. Banabas Nagando highlights the three main delays that cause fistula. There is that delay to decide to get to a health facility to seek skilled uh, health services. So the delay in deciding, should I go, should I not go, I've not informed my Yidana, that's my landlord, I've not informed my husband, will my mother-in-law agree, do the traditions permit for us to deliver in, in health facilities and not at home? The delay in deciding to seek skilled help. Now the second delay comes after they have decided they will seek help. Either the distance is far, there is no means of transport, or the, what we call the road network is not good. So that is where the second delay comes in, delay in reaching skilled uh, help, skilled attention. So they get there in a motor king, in a motorbike, horse, uh, carted, uh, whatever, they delay in, enter, in getting there. The third and most important delay is they get to the health facility and they have to join long queues to be attended to. That's where the third delay occurs. Delay in receiving this skilled health care service. Essie Song is 28 years old. She lives at Imuna, in the Ekonfi constituency 
of the central region. Esi had eight children. Four of them have died due to fistula. Fistula can be very devastating, not only on the health of the women who live with the condition, but also on their social interactions. Esi is unable to socialize because of her condition. I begin to leak urine anytime I sit down. Because I'm always wet, I'm unable to work. I don't go anywhere. I'm always here at home. I used to smoke fish to sell, but because of my condition, I no longer plan to drink. It is hard for her to speak about her own situation. So her mother, Mamin Prim, explains her daughter has become withdrawn due to this condition. Her family could not raise the required amount for her surgery. My daughter's panties get wet because of this condition. And I also don't have money to be buying her sanitary pad every day. I sometimes have to rely on friends and family to support my daughter and I. Her condition worries me a lot. My daughter sometimes gets embarrassed when she's in the midst of her friends due to the awful discharges in her panties. Abna Meyamewu is at Imuna. She also lives with this condition. She tells Beryl she has lost seven children as a result of the condition now. Indeed, life has been tough for her. The pain and shame from urinating on herself all the time made her suicidal. As a result of this sickness, I don't like to drink anything when I'm out. If I drink too much, I'll feel the urge to urinate and I'll embarrass myself in front of people. So it's only when I feel thirsty and I'm at home that I can drink a lot of water. When I stand amongst other people, they complain of a strong smell, so I have to leave. If you were the one in this condition, would you be happy? You certainly wouldn't. I'm not happy. I've really struggled. I wore a catheter all the way to Accra. I couldn't even sit down. I was so wet. I wanted just to die and end it all. But my children were young, so what was I supposed to do? If at the time my children were old enough, like they are right now, I would have just taken my life. I'm not lying to you. I was so determined to do this. Assemblyman for Imuna Electoral Area, Nasir Anderson, says many of these women in the community prefer to deliver at home because they are poor. As an assembly man, he is sometimes forced to assist most of these women when they need to pay their medical bills. As you, as you saw me um, selling drugs over here, at times some, some uh, pregnant woman will go to the hospital and they will just prescribe maybe Biko or uh, Para. When they come in, they, they don't have money to buy. So due to the financial difficulty that they have, it's hindering them to go to hospital when they are um, when they are, when it is time for them to deliver, because they know for over there you have to take care, and when you go there too, we have to make the mix a little bit expensive, which they don't have, so they they prefer giving birth at home. That one, if you have or you don't have, since you are you are living with them, they will just do it for you, and it's giving them a lot of problems. Too. As you know, if there is a lot of uh, facilities nearby us. Okay, but when they are going, they will not take a car, you just walk and get access. It, 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 will be, it, will, it will be better for them to... It is stark reality that on many occasions, women who suffer from this condition are maltreated by their husbands. And in some cases, they lose their marriages, they lose their respect and self-esteem. That was the fate of Abna Meyemewu.
My husband and I used to operate a big fishing business where we buy fish from fishermen and sell to processors. But when I got this condition, he took me off from it and asked me to stay home. He later got married to another lady. In fact, I became his enemy. He even stopped giving me money. He forgot I'm the mother of his children. Obstetric fistula most commonly occurs among women who live in low-resourced countries who give birth without access to medical help. A woman with fistula is more often rejected by her husband and pushed out of her village due to her foul smell. 35-year-old Yibele Namunikbe lives at Donye in the Wa West district of the Upper West region. Yibele has suffered so much stigma in this community. She recounts her days of living with fistula. Yibele is fortunate. She has undergone a successful surgery. Those times were very traumatizing for me. All my clothes became worn out as a result of the condition. But for sympathizers and some relatives who supported me with some used clothes, I don't know what would have become of me then. In fact, because of the number of surgeries I underwent, I got so weak and was always tired. I felt lonely during the period because I could not even mingle with anybody. I'm so grateful to all those who supported me in one way or the other towards my recovery. Twenty-four-year-old Grace Asieko lives at Manford near Apam in the central region. She has the worst form of fistula. Grace is suffering from rectovaginal fistula. That's simply a leaking hole created between the rectum and the vagina. <laughs> I first visited the Cape Coast Hospital, where I was referred to the Mankesim Hospital. There, I was scheduled for surgery, but three days after the procedure, my stomach began swelling up. So the doctor attended to me, but couldn't find exactly what was wrong. So he also referred me to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Grace has also had her fair share of stigmatization due to the complexity of her case. She narrates some of the traumatic experiences she had had after her second surgery. When I had the first surgery, I called effortlessly ease through my anus. But now I can't. Anytime I attend nature's call, the feces pass through the hole that has been created as a result of the surgery. In fact, when I was discharged from the hospital, I realized I had lost a lot of weight. People who knew me before I had this condition always cry whenever they see me because of how I look now. At a point, I thought I would even die because of what I was going through. People rejected me whenever I get close to them because of the foul smell. And this happens whenever I leak feces. Sometimes I don't even have food to eat. The father of my first child doesn't take care of our five-year-old son now. I sometimes don't eat a whole day just so I could take care of my child's needs. Things are very, very difficult for me now. And so I have to resort to begging in order to get money for my upkeep. My mother used to help me, but she can't now because she does not have enough money. 
Grace is also unable to pass feces through her anus or her feces pass through the hole created. If she has to ease herself, it is always a big deal. I notice house flies hovering around her, an indication she has leaked feces. The feces would pass through the hole that had been created after the surgery. I always feel pains in my waist and lower abdomen whenever I visit the toilet. About a week ago, the hole became small, but due to the odor, I started covering it again, and that has made it become so big again. Sometimes I feel sad when I'm about to eat because of the pains I have to endure. Any food I eat gives me tummy upset. That's why I have resorted to taking this medication to ease my pain. According to Dr. Gando, unfortunately some cases are inoperable and this is very worrying. There are some that you just see them you can operate them. With it, it is there, when you look at the woman's pelvis, it's all like a stone, you can't even cut anywhere. So some of them, even the diversion is not that possible, because the intestine, you have to divert the urine to, you can't create enough space, so it will just be like, she will be leaking both stool and urine when you pass it there, but you need to be sure they can contain the urine and feces mixed together for a period of time. So even that one is questionable, and its complications certain times can be questionable. One of the challenges with fistula women is their best would have been for them to be operated almost immediately. If they don't get that operation after the fistula has developed, what they generally do is that they avoid taking water. So the urine is concentrated in some kind, even from what we call calcium stones. And the calcium stones, practically destroys the whole place and it is like a hard wood, you get it. And by so doing, it affects the intestine. The intestine too that you are going to prepare to divert becomes a problem, so you can't even do anything. Some also have a complete destruction of both the urethra and then the, the rectum, the anus. So practically it's an entire, what we call, labor, delivery injury complex. So it means the patient will have to live with it for the rest of her life? That is, yes, that is, yeah. Despite these stories of despair, there are stories of hope. There are some women who have had surgeries to correct their conditions. Hawa Nayirima is one of them. She's lived with a condition for over 20 years. She has had three safe deliveries after the successful surgery. It was after my fourth delivery that my husband advised I undergo family planning to prevent me from conceiving again. I haven't given birth after that procedure. Yibele <laughs> Namunikbe, another fistula repaired patient, has now resorted to farming and is advising women with these conditions to report to the health centers. I never imagined I could have a successful surgery after all the other unsuccessful ones. Nobody ate my food and I was just really suffering in silence. But I'm grateful by God's grace I don't leak urine again. I plead with all those with fistula not to shy away from the health centers. They should report to the clinics and seek treatment. Dr. Gando advocates the need for satellite units in the three regions up north to help deal with the backlog of cases of unrepaired fistula and present ones. 
according to him, obstetric fistula cases should be isolated from other maternal cases since they require urgent and skilled attention. The facts definitely have not changed. The three northern regions continue to be uh, poor. The health care system continues to be substandard. And no matter how you see it, even the new hospital coming will not add up much to the situation because it is already going to be over flooded with patients and we wouldn't be able to uh, overcome the challenges. So, yes, the three northern regions continue to bear the uh, majority of the cases. And the ideal thing would have been for us to have satellite units that fistula can be done. Both complex and simple fistula can only be done at a low-cost facility. We need our mothers, sisters and daughters alive. We need them to live lives devoid of shame or stigma. Our ability as a nation to help these women with leaking wounds will help them exude all these traits and enable them stay healthy and alive. A miracle is what Kuka needs now. She wants to be happy again and healthy enough to go back to her food vending business. For now, I feel there is no hope for me. I'm therefore appealing to the general public for help. I take care of my children, so I need your support. Kuka is not the only one who will have to live with the condition for the rest of her life. Grace will also have to do the same until help comes and she is able to undergo a successful surgery. For now, the future for Kuka, Isi, Abna and Grace is uncertain. It looks bleak. Only time will tell if they will ever smile and live no more lives like all other women who have undergone successful fistula surgeries. This is Beryl and Estina Richter's report for Hotline Documentary.